So here's the issue. Key on. No lights. I'm going to show you how to fix that today. Stay tuned. One thing that I've still not decided on is a name. You got a good name for this project? If you do, let me know in the comment section below. Hey fellas, PV2 Smurf here. Two Smurf, PV2 Smurf here. PV2 Smurf here. Oh fellas, PV2 Smurf here. The very first thing to check is definitely in the trunk. Why the trunk? Because your tail lights. If your bulb's bad. Previously, I've already tested. Bulbs are, get, are, are not getting any power. It, neither one of them. The bulbs have been replaced for the reverse lights. So what's next? The next thing be to check your fuse panel to see if your fuse is blown. In order to access this fuse panel, because it's on the inside one, as indicated by the owner's manual, pull this down, pinch the sides of it. Each side of it pinches. See the ear? There's one on the other side. The box will come loose, exposing the fuse panel. Now specifically, Ford labels their panels, apparently, especially on this specific model. Each one of them has a different number, which corresponds to the number located on the fuse box, as you can see here. Now as you can see on this fuse panel box, each one of these fuses have a number indexing which fuse is what and which one goes where. Air fuse that we're worried about and concerned with is fuse number 53. It's indicated here. Also, as shown on the screen inside the owner's manual, which I'll put a link in the description below that'll show you if you bought your vehicle, you have an owner's manual. Well, guess what? You can go online and you can download a PDF version free of charge to be able to reference for events such as this. After checking fuse 53, indicated here, the fuse currently has power when the key is on, which tells me we are getting power to the sensor. Next thing I can do involves going under the hood. Hood props over there, by the way. After referencing the owner's manual, which I've downloaded online, inside this fuse box, it does not contain any fuse that powers the backup lights for this specific vehicle. Yours may, so please check. Instead, I got online, Haynes.com. Not sponsored, by the way. Bought this book. This book covers anything from 2000 to 2011. Model vehicles. I will show you the bottom corner. Here's the ISBN number in case it's something you need to purchase. In the back of this book, it shows all the wiring diagrams for everything. So that way you can determine where your switch fault is. After carefully going through the wiring diagram, I was able to indicate that this is where my circuit was and this was the issue. The issue is going to the reverse light bulb located here here is the trace of the wire in which it runs up. I was able to determine that the wiring more than likely is probably damaged or broke at this connection point here. Next question is where do you find a park slash neutral position switch? Let's see we have a manual shift. All right, here are a list of the parts you're going to need in order to complete this project. Things you will need for this video are a book. It's going to help you diagnose the issue so that way you know exactly what you're looking for and what color the wire is. You're also going to need a deep well 22. You could use a crow's foot 22. You can modify a crescent wrench. You'll see that portion when we get there. A piece of wire, or you could use a paper clip, either one. You also will need an eight millimeter, and that's a quarter inch bit that I use because I have one accessible. If not, you can more than, more than easily use a screwdriver, a flat headed screwdriver. And that's all you need for this repair. As you can see indicated on this, it tells you specifically what the wire color is on this specific vehicle. So that way you can locate it. So in the event you don't know what the switch is, you don't know where it's located, you can't find a good reference, you have no idea, you can at least narrow down your suspect on where it's located, where it may be located based on the color of the wire. So the wire is indicated here, shows that going from the fuse inside, which has power, Going out, it shows a color wire. What color is the wire that's indicated on here? Then, if you're still unsure, you can follow. Sometimes the wire does change color. In this event, it does. In the event it doesn't, then coming off of the wiring connection system, it shows the wiring connection to the back of the vehicle is a different color. Sometimes the wiring color follows all the way through. You can just follow the same color and go all the way back. In this case, it did not. 
but it allowed me to be able to figure out which color wire plugged into the fuse so that way I would be able to locate it inside the vehicle. Now the switch we're looking for is located on the transmission. The way the engine sits inside the engine bay, the right side or passenger side to the driver's side. So engine, transmission is located under here. You can't see much of anything of the transmission because the battery box, tray, and battery are in the way. However, for this install, there's no need to remove it unless you feel the need to and you need to clean some things out while you're at it, test your battery, or just do it once over. For this installation, it's not needed. However, we are going to have to remove the air intake box. So, quarter inch socket will remove this one and this one. Then we'll able to move this like this. This side out, that side out, and then we're just going to set this over here out of the way. To reach the switch, which is located underneath this battery tray here, I'm just going to remove this right here. Now this is simple to remove. These fasteners that are located here are 8 millimeters. We'll loosen them up. There's a place that snaps down in right here. So I remove it, I'll show you a close-up of what exactly we have down here. You'll be able to locate it and see it. Back and forth. I'm going to do that. Pull this part up. And it popped out. The part that's stuck down in here is in this groove located right here. There's a grommet. The bottom of the box. But there's the piece that goes down in that piece right there. That's what's actually holding this in here. Shine the little light in there so you can see. Now down in here is our transmission. Now you can move that battery tray and get access or move this mount after jacking the vehicle up. And you would have sufficient access to get that. However, the connector that we're specifically after is located right there. As you can see, have it circled there for you or an arrow pointing at it. That connection goes to the reverse lights. You can see the light glowing pretty good on the wire color show there. Basically all we need to do is reach back in there and unplug that. The location of the plug is there. On the back of it is the snap. You want to squeeze it and then you want to pull up on the plug. Don't pull on the wires. Fillers, we've been through that before. Now we're going to test if our wire is any good. Now there's multiple ways to test this. The way I'm going to test this, took a little piece of wire I that I had here. Just cut the ends of it. You can also use a paper clip and I'm just going to bridge it over. So I'll bridge this over, we'll be able to see if the rear lights come on for the reverse lights. If I bridge this over, the reverse light should come on indicating that the switch has failed. And now we have the key on. Take the connector here. See the rear lights. What we're going to do is bridge this over. One on one side. Lights on. Lights off. Now we know that this connection and the wire running through the lights is good. So the only thing that leaves issue is the connector that this connects in, which is bad, and that's what we need to replace. Now as you can see the plug a little better in this view here. This is probably about the best I can get, considering its location. Pretty simple. Supposedly to reach to get to it's it's just not using common hand tools So 22 millimeter deep well that you have to have to change the ball joint on a Nissan Maxima Well, that's where this thing's gonna come in use right here because the new one fits on a 22 This one should fit on a 22 should be able to reach back in there We should be able to take it loose. It should only be hand tight in the event that it's tighter than that I would spray it with some penetrating fluid prior to trying to remove it. So I got the 22 on a socket uh, a crow's foot will work really well right here if you have a 22. If you don't, I guess we'll just give this a whirl. 
could probably get a crescent wrench down in there. However, you really don't have the ability to get a lot of you know, to turn. Crescent wrench this size, which I originally was going to use, will not work. Uh, the size on it, I guess, when compared to a uh, half inch ratchet, see the size of it, it's just way too long, guys. If you wanted to cut that, you could probably reach back in there with this and you wouldn't need this. But that would be your rig, your call. I'm not. I'm going to attempt to use this. So I'm going to do is make sure it's on right. I'm going to reach down in there and set it in place. Making sure that it is over top of the sensor. Seated. Broke loose, pretty simple, wasn't very tight. Make sure about laying this stuff around the barrier like I just about did. The reason why you will cause it short. So reach back in here by hand now. Just like that. I have road sensor out of the way. As shown here. He's a little crusty looking. Contacts are still in place. Now you could probably check this. And see if it's getting a crack resistance, see if it's working. One thing to make note on, as you can see right here, the old one as well as the new one should have an, a seal right here. There's not that many threads on it, so it doesn't have to be really tight, but it just needs to be snug on there. This one was barely on there and snug, so that's the way I'm going to put the new one on. So out with the old, in with the new. I do want to note, the way this sensor works is whenever it puts it in reverse, it pushes this detent ball in, and when it does, it causes power to the switch. Ball's not pushed in, it doesn't. Might take yours off, this ball might be a little stuck, that might fix your issue, but that's the way it works. So make sure your transmission's not in reverse, because if it is, it will push on this, it'll make it more difficult to find the hole that it goes in to screw it in. Now here's your part number to this specific switch. You might want to check to make sure that you got the specific one, this is the correct one. This is the part number. It's good to put a coating of whatever uh, fluid this O-ring is going to be in, in before you place this in there. Another good practice may be you may want to put a little anesthesia on it. I wouldn't recommend it being so close to the sensor here. It may cause it to conduct over and it may ruin or damage the sensor. Either which way, we're going to put this back in. Same way we took the other one out. One thing to make note of, you do want to put the vehicle in first gear or any gear other than reverse because it will push up on that which want to cause this will not cause this to go in correctly i'm gonna try to get a close-up as you can see located right there beside the engine mount that's the spot where your sensor goes in and out at there's you can see a new switch is installed one thing i did have was because of all the crud and stuff around it i had to wipe it off and it took a minute to really get it to line up and begin threading so be patient but be diligent and don't force it on there there's not that many threads on it that nose is on there we're just going to good don't got to be tight tight it's just got to be on there now we're going to plug our sensor back up there's our wiring check to see where our new connection it's in the same location and it is facing towards the rear. Push it down to your click. Now we're going to validate our work before we put any of this back together. Now, validate our work. We're going to turn our key on. Take the car, clutch in the lights, no reverse. Reverse. Through the gears. Lot's still off. In reverse. That's it, fellas. I want to appreciate you for tuning in on the video. If I have anything that I missed, could have done a little bit better or whatever, let me know in the comment section below. As always, guys, remember your rig, your call.